Well, once again, praise the Lord, everybody. I apologize for a moment ago. The feed, uh, uh, the feed kind of closed up on us. So, uh, we're back to where we are now. And, uh, well, as I was saying before, uh, I have a message from the Lord. And, um, uh, there is a, uh, a strong, uh, righteous wind behind me as I give this message today. Uh, I don't look to try to, uh, sell a score or try to be some kind of way or anything like that. Uh, if you, you know, look in my, me historically, uh, I don't post a lot. I don't post a lot of things. I don't do a lot of live posting or any of these type things. Um, this is once in a, in a while something comes about because, uh, it's just not something that I do. Um, so, but I'm telling you what the Lord has given me today. I assure you that it is going to go viral. Uh, it is going to go all across the world because today the Lord wants to talk to every pastor concerning this prophecy that he has given me. It has to do with ministry. It has to do with your family. It has to do with your own life. Uh, the Lord has given me uh, the grace to be uh, to be able to give this prophecy to the world. Um, they say, uh, you don't see me much on media. I don't say much on media. Every now and then I may follow or text someone in media. But if you're on now, as you come on, begin to share this live feed with all those that are your followers, shared with your followers, uh, those who have liked your pages. You begin to share and share because this message will go all across the world. Um, uh, not everyone has this kind of grace. Uh, not everyone God gives this kind of grace to, but I am thankful today that the Lord has given me a message to, uh, to send out to the world. This is a world message and this message is very important for those of you that are currently in ministry. You currently have some uh, a platform to a certain degree, uh, whatever it is that you may have, uh, that the Lord has graced you with. This message is for you. So as, as you come on, uh, I want you to share as you listen to this message day and day after. I want you to share it. I ask that you share it with your, with those that you, um, uh, uh, that you are friends with, uh, along different media sources. Uh, but this message, when it is in its entirety, when it's complete, it will also be put on other platforms, especially platforms like YouTube and portions on TikTok and all the different other platforms that are out there because this is a world message and we have to get this message to every, every, uh, uh, person who, 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 uh, currently has any type of platform, whether it's just media, or whether you're in the pulpit, this is a message from the Lord that you will need. So within this message, uh, I want you to understand that I don't get to take sides with anybody or anything like this. I don't get to refer to anybody by names. Um, when, as I go through this message that the Lord have given me, you will understand what's going on and let the Spirit speak to you about what needs to happen. But the message has to do with uh, the most recent upheavals and different uh, things that are going on um, from preacher to preacher, from father to sons, uh, do mothers, daughters, uh, and all these different things that are happening that we're seeing in media where we are basically destroying ourselves before we can even get started. So, but in this message that the Lord has given me, uh, I have to be candid. I don't I don't reserve the up the uh the, the the latitude to deviate from it or to or to cut it or to pull from it in any type of way the way the Lord had given to me and the way that even after that the spirit began to explain some things to me uh this is the way this message is going uh to uh going to come out so I begin the message with saying that a lot of you see in media how how people are attacking each other and fathers and sons and all these different things that are going on. I don't, I didn't even like it. So I chose not to 
to share or get involved with that type of things that is going on. And I pray the Lord that it settles itself. Well, uh, and I'm still in that category that I reserve for myself. That's why in this message, I'm not naming names. I'm not calling particular pastors names. Uh, the only thing I'm doing is, is showing these points that are relevant and that are carrying on business in the, in the, in the spirit realm, which needs to be stopped. They needs, there needs to be put an end to this kind of thing that is going on. Here's something that the Lord shared with me. I said, Lord, uh, uh, as we see these things that are going on, it says, uh, I said, so what's, how do I begin this message that you're beginning, uh, uh, that you're having me to say to them or speak to them? He took me to Isaiah chapter 56 and verse number 11. And when I begin to read there, it says, uh, it says, yeah, they are greedy dogs, which can never have enough. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way. Everyone for his gain from his quarter. I said, okay, Lord. I, he said, uh, <clears throat> take to me. He says, what's happening there is people are using these, that, 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 uh, 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 that spirit of greed to take out other men of God. And many of these men and women of God that they are attacking, that they are taking out, are those that have helped to pave the way for us. They are the ones that have built us to a certain degree to where we are going. They are taking out fathers in the realms. They are destroying these fathers, not just pastors or apostles or evangelists or teachers, but they are destroying fathers who are in the realms. And because of this, uh, the Lord is sending a strong warning to them for them to stop this nonsense Repent for this nonsense that the, that the, that the word of God can, can continue to go forth for this generation and beyond. But there are too many people that are carrying on warfare in the spirit realm to where they are causing a destabilizing effect to take place. And I will talk with that in a moment about what's, what's, what's happening in the realms when we see these kind of fights happening. And most people are doing these types of things because number one, they're, lo they're losing their grasp on what it means to be in the spirit, what it means to be led by the spirit. So most of them are led by their platform. They're led by how many likes they have. They are led by how many, uh, people, how many followers they have. They are led by what other, other groups and saying and peer groups are saying uh, to them as opposed to the authenticity of the word of God. So they are misled. So, and I said, Lord, then what's this thing about greedy dogs? As it says in Isaiah 56 and 11, he said, my son, he said, here is the wisdom in this. He said, a dog normally will not attack a person, a human being. He said, he said, uh, but, uh, every so often there is a dog that through the process of desperation, through the process of extreme hunger or through the process of some mentally, uh, like they, the dog took a sickness, like they developed rabies or something. The dog took a sickness or something and then they began to attack a human being. He said, well, he said, well, the problem is not so much the first dog that made the attack. He said, the issue is that when the other dogs see that it is okay to attack that person, that human being, he said that then the other dogs begin to follow that dog that made the attack because they assume that it is okay to attack that human being. He said there is much more respect for the one that initially attacked the human being because at least that one did it from what was going on inside of them. He said, but the other attackers was only repeating what they saw. And he began to share with me how through the process of greed, many of them that are attacking pastors and, and, and leaders and shepherds, many of them that are on this attack are only attacking because they saw someone else who through desperation attacked a pastor. They saw someone else who had, who had, had mentally lost it as a, as a person of God and began to attack. And because of that, they begin to follow suit because they think now that it's okay to attack another man or woman of God. And, be, and to make that somehow okay is really nonsense. 
So this would God begin to share this thing with me. I said, okay, Lord, I understand. Now he said, he said, these are greedy dogs. He said, many of them are shepherds who cannot understand, meaning that these are people who have lost their way. Many of them are even outside of their calling. Many of them have no true spiritual father. No one who really speaks into their life. They have someone that they call spiritual father, but really they have no one to speak into their lives. They declare themselves to be equal to their spiritual father. So what happens is when they see this attack happen, they start following suit. Because the la through, through the spirit of controversy, the last one that attacked gained another 300,000 followers or something big, something, something like that to where they, they, they see more money coming in by the number of followers that they have. When they saw this greed take, the thing taking place, they became greedy like dogs and be, be, and chose to eat up other men and women of God in the process. So I said, then Lord, uh, I see they are operating in the spirit of the greedy dog. I said, then what, what are they? What spirit is this that they are operating in? The Lord then began to take me to Genesis chapter four. When I went to Genesis chapter four, you know, that deals with uh, 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 Adam and Eve began to have their firstborn Cain and their secondborn Abel. And in the process of time, Abel, uh, 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 I mean, Abel uh, gave his firstlings unto the Lord. But then in the process of time, as the Bible says, Abel, uh, Abel brought, uh, I mean, Cain brought an offering unto the Lord. But the Lord was more pleased by Abel. Therefore, Cain became jealous of God being pleased with Abel. So what happened here in this notion? We saw that Cain then killed Abel. And the Lord said to me, the same spirit that caused Cain to kill Abel is the same spirit that they are operating in now in this platform. To where others are be, many of them are becoming jealous because God has, has a, a different level of favor on one minister one servant, then he do another. So they become jealous and they think the process means to take out that servant some kind of way. Therefore, it may elevate my platform now and people will come to me. Are you crazy? There is no way by you taking out one that all of those people are now coming to you. Don't be fooled by that process. So I said, I said, then what's the, what's the business? What's the, 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 the serious detail of this thing, Lord? He said, he said, those people that he think that, that they think are coming to them are actually people who are part of the great falling away. And we, and it, it may be possible that these people may not ever be regained again. He said, they're falling away because every man or woman of God that they attacked, uh, they, they looked up to that person. And when they destroyed them, calling them all these names and calling them sorcerers and warlocks and witches and all these types of things, those people who were grounded in my word, says the Lord, of the people that no longer confided in prayer in preachers altogether, even those who, who may be authentic, found themselves losing members. Oh my God, help me here. So they began to have this great falling away that was taking place, uh, that's taking place <coughs> within the church. So I said, then Lord, <coughs> give me some examples of what's happening here. What's going on here? What's taking place? He said, he starts sending me through the last memory. He said, this thing actually started last year. Where, um, if, if many of you remember, there's this beautiful woman servant of the Lord that is in LA. <clears throat> like I said, I'm not calling name, but, but she rose up out of Los Angeles, California. Beautiful apostle, uh, that's coming out of LA, distributing much power, distributing much this demonstration in the spirit of God. These people begin to attack this woman of God so bad. I could see, I could see how much it was up on this woman of God. And many of them had never been out there to even see her platform or to see what she started with or to see what she was working with. They have never, many of them had never even seen her in person before. Uh, and so what happens is everyone saw that attack. And to be honest, <clears throat> it was another woman of God who attacked her. The nonsense became because there's others 
who were friends with the attacker chose not to condemn the actions of that attacker minus one person. And I will share that in a moment. The rest of them chose to uh, just act like nothing happened and be quiet about the situation. When it, sh when it happened in public, it should have been condemned in public that this is not the way this business goes. So this would never happen again. That's why open rebuke should is necessary for us. It's better than these private behind the scenes discussions. Open rebuke is necessary in these particular categories. So what happened is they attacked that prophet first. I mean, that that apostle first, that woman of God. I know in her night it had her to tears. Why? Because I can go in the spirited realm and see how it was affecting her. New person on the scene. They attacking this woman of God. What was wrong with her? Maybe she was too too beautiful in the Lord. Maybe she was so simple in what she did. She it didn't take much, you know. She stretched forth her hands, and people get delivered. People get healed. Pointing fingers and stretch forth hands, people get delivered. People can understand it. So what they want to tell? They want to throw this nonsense out that she's fake, or throw this nonsense out that she's uh some kind of way uh 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 staging miracles and all of this nonsense when they didn't even know this woman of God. What happened there? What's going on now? Why are we attacking this, this, this major prophet that's in Simi Valley, California right now? Why are we attacking him? We don't like his dreadlocks. We don't like the way he dressed. Maybe it could be, I, 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 you know, he, he's, he, you know, I don't like his flamboyancy. I don't like his, the way he carries himself. What's wrong? Does he have an accent that I don't agree with or something? Why are we attacking these great people of God who people are confiding in to bring the word of the Lord to them? We don't like him for what reason? Nobody knows. So everybody comes in, starts attacking that man of God. What happens then? We start attacking this, uh, I'm sorry, this other man of God out of, um, I, 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 I believe Maryland, you know, another one to have locks in his hair. We don't like him. So we call him a, 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 a witch doctor because he taught something that we don't understand, you know. So we'll make him a witch doctor because I don't like his teaching, something third eye or something like that. I don't like his teaching. So, so we'll make him a witch doctor until he can explain what is it that he's using to cause people to, to, to be delivered or healed or set free or to cause people to be lifted up in the spirit of God, to cause people overnight to move out of a place of, uh, of poverty and into a place of the riches of the Lord. What's going on here to where we have to continue to fight these great men and women of God? We fought the woman of God in L.A. We fought the man of God in Simi Valley, California. And then we crossed town. We come all the way out to uh, uh, Miami. Brand new young prophet, strong in the spirit, strong in his prophetic gift. He's operating in the Lord, but they come because of his association. He must be a weak doctor too. Because of this, he must be that. I don't understand how they're seeing what they see. So we'll just call them witches or witch doctors or sorcerers and all this nonsense until they explain to us how they get their power. This is the same stuff they did with Jesus when they called him Beelzebub. We don't understand his power, so it must be Beelzebub. I said, then Lord, what's going on here? He said, the spirit of Cain. And I looked and saw, he said, what happened with Cain after that moment? Cain began to move out into his own area out near the mountains. And the first thing he did, he began to set up what we know today as being the God of Baal. Bell spirit. And where do we get bells that, 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 that uh, what spirits fall under that Jezza, that, that, that spirit bell? Jezza bell. Bell ha lean. All these spirits that's trying to invoke some kind of light. Because that's what they would do with Baal. They would treat Baal as if though he was God Almighty. They would go to the mountains and try to do that. Cain set up that nonsense. So people are still following the spirit of Baal these days. So what are they doing? What it ends up happening? Produce Jezebel who end up attacking the true men and women of God. I'm not saying that preachers are all these preachers are, <coughs> are that's doing this are some kind of way demonically possessed. No, no, no. <clears throat> There's a greater entity there. When you be, when you become an agent of Satan, many times you're not even possessed. You're an agent, meaning that Satan is just using you to do a particular thing. There's no deep possession there, but he, he messes with your mind, messes with your feelings because you're all jealous. What you don't have, he, you use those things to attack others with. Satan uses you to get into 
the system to cause you to call these people witch doctors to start slaying the prophets, the apostles, the true men and women of God. Then you may after Miami. What did you do? Because of association with my, you know, a good a a a a, a good brother of mine in, in the in the central central uh, Florida area in the Orlando area where he do much of his ministry. Why attack that man of God? That man's got a young child. He got a lovely wife. He's doing nothing but going around places in his cells. Uh, he preaching the word of God, touching the word of God, and, and you know, uh, bringing it to where he goes. Everywhere he goes, there's a, the, the people of God is following him. But because of association, you even make him wish doctor, you moving away from him too. It's all nonsense that's going on. And all that man does is if, and, and then I see people attacking him because of his association with T.B. Josh, the late great prophet T.B. Joshua. Why are you hating on him? You say, well, People are reporting that he did this and that. Okay, who didn't do something? Who didn't do something? Does it mean that he was not anointed? No. It doesn't mean that he did not deliver a lot of people. No. Go tell those people all over the world that received their healing, that received their deliverance, that T.B. Joshua was, was fake. Try to tell these people who confided in that. And because many of them are saved because of his ministry and you go and tell them he was fake. What's going to happen to those people? No, they're not going to join your, 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 your followers list because you came and slashed another man of God. They lose their faith. They begin to lose all that God had done in their life. Yes, and I am an advocate for the pro for the late great prophet T.B. Joshua. And that's the last name. That's the only name you'll hear me call here because he's already in the late great, still up in the uh, 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 up in the heavens, trying to help and fight on our behalf. Why? He's in the cloud of witnesses. Many of you might not understand the cloud of witnesses, but that's okay. That's the saints who have gone before us, who are, who were once carrying the mantles. They know what to go tell the heavens about so that we can, we can understand better what goes on here. And their work has, is not complete. We are completing their work. So as this continue on, I said, okay, Lord, I understand that spirit of Cain, that spirit of Baal, the infiltrated. What happens? They move on out to Dallas. One of the bishops that's been great in our community, in, in all of the church, because somebody said he's associated with this, associated with that. We ought to slash him and kill him. And nobody even know what was going on there, what the meeting was about or nothing. But because, don't you understand he's carrying a mantle? We should be praying for him. Lord, let him keep this mantle uplifted so he can properly pass it off to somebody and not die with the mantle glued to his hands. God, we lift him up and pray for him that he don't die with the mantle, but that he pulls it, he passes it off to others. We should be praying this thing. This is a man that once spoke and the entire church listened. I'm talking across the world. He, he could speak and the entire church was listening. So now, because we see an association, we attack this man. So now Dallas is no more good to us, right? It's nonsense. So what do we do then? We, we make our way out to Cape Town. <coughs> Cape Town, where my, even my spiritual father is out in Cape Town. Weekly, this man suffers attacks. Weekly suffers attacks. He titles himself even as bond servant. That's all he wants to do. Be a servant, a bond servant of Christ. That's all he ever wanted to be. Just do or be in his life. He don't care about names and titles and all this other stuff. He said, my name is bond servant of Christ. That's all he says. People are attacking him. Why attacking him? They don't understand him. He Every day he's flowing in the gifts of the spirit. He's flowing in power. But yet they are still attacking. He's delivering people. Re-establishing churches. Re-establishing connection. Doing great work for the body of Christ. Yet people are still attacking. They're allowing media to start attacks. And people chime in on it. Oh my God. Help me here. Don't you know that all of this is nonsense? It's straight nonsense. And what we're doing, I said, Lord, what, what, what's going on here? What's, what's causing all these problems? You know, and as we see this, what do we see? <clears throat> How does these things happen? Everything going fine. Last year, many of you remember this one popular movie came out last year, had about six to eight people on the cover of this movie that came out last year. Since that movie, it's been nothing but calamity. Something happened during either the filming of that movie or the projection of that movie or the greed that was associated in that movie. Something didn't go right. After that movie, initially, Tennessee went crazy. Somebody out there in Tennessee 
All of a sudden, I'm coming out the closet and I don't want to associate with this person, that person, this person, and they all witch doctors. And I don't, and because if you associated with them, I don't want to associate with you no more. It's nonsense. So you're attacking from California all the way to Florida and you're in Tennessee, but you're coming out of what closet? What closet were you in when you launched this, when you decided to launch this attack? Because it definitely was not a closet of prayer. This is nonsense. So that's where we got the one of the first pieces of nonsense right out of Tennessee. Next time we look up, here it comes again. Another piece of nonsense out of New York. Just recently, a piece of nonsense coming out of New York. Here we go. Puts puts this 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 uh uh this talk talk guy, this talk media guy on his platform to talk bad about uh, the late great prophet T.B. Joshua to talk bad about the ones in California, everybody's witch doctor, to talk bad about Maryland, to talk bad about, and to say everybody is a sorcerer. He actually called the great a sorcerer. I can't understand it. And this person sits there with in all of his hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, okay, yeah. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. I'm sure glad. And he called bringing that, that, that guy on there, he, he, he said, how beautiful this will be for the body of Christ. How is it beautiful to bring on this syndicate person to totally uh, talk about men and women of God? Even the bishop, talking about the bishop like it's nothing. Just And he's, what to what mantle do you hold to where you can have a platform to talk about these people this way? There is none. It's nonsense. And God is warning. Stop it and repent. So New York was the latest one. Here they come in all, all of this nonsense. You know, how, how is that beautiful? You know, uh, 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 you know, it, w within the body of Christ, you know, ca calling it a, you know, this, 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 this break in there or whatever they want to call this nonsense. So another one just, just happened not too long ago. Canada. We, we're now bringing demons out of Canada, people who are filled with demons in Canada that are bad mouthing preachers that are right here in America and preachers from all over around the world. Why would you give your platform to this guy from Canada to speak ill of preachers that, that set the stage for you to be even able to preach? You only have a platform because somebody preached the gospel before you. And how is it that you can go and just attack these, these fathers like this? See, one thing people don't understand is that in the realms of the spirit, um, fathers hold a different degree. You have the fivefold apostle, prophet, you know, the gifts. And then you have the other gifts of, of the spirit, mir healing, miracles, and governments, and helps, and all these. But then you have fathers that God places in an entirely different category. See, when Aaron and Miriam put their mouth on Moses, God didn't come and protect Moses because he was a prophet. No, God came to Moses because Moses was a father. Fathers speak to God face to face. Now, let me show you how that scripture played out and you can go read it for yourself. He said, he said, bring them out to the courtyard. And I will speak to them. Moses brought them out to the courtyard. Because they didn't like Moses. Because Moses was getting into idolatry or witchcraft or whatever they want to call it. Because he chose he chose a woman for himself. But in this regard, God said, bring them out to the courtyard. After God brought them out to the courtyard, let's look at what happened here. God says, if there be a prophet among you, I will speak to you. In a dream or a vision or some other means in this way. He said, but my servant Moses, I speak to him face to face. Moses was a father. He spoke face to face. Abraham was a father. He spoke face to face. Even Noah was a father. He spoke face to face. Isaac, dealing with his son, spoke face to face. Because they are fathers in the realms. In the realms of the spirit, when you understand fathers, 
you will now have the wisdom to know you can get yourself in some serious hot, hot burning coals with the Father God Almighty because he is the father to, of fathers. And he has a realm where he speak to fathers, where fathers speak face to face. They don't go through some dream or vision or discernment or something like this or revelation or something. They are face to face with God Almighty. When you understand this concept, you will then begin to, to, to uh, uh, rethink in how you're handling fathers. Because many of you, because you have a platform, you're not a father. You're nowhere near being a father. And all of a sudden, because you just learned how to cast out a demon, all of a sudden you can go and correct fathers? Have you lost your mind? No, you can't go correct fathers in that way. No, you just got on the scenes yourself. How, how dare you try to correct a father in this manner? You don't do this particular thing. And God said, I've even told them in my word, honor your parents in the Lord. That's not talking about your natural. Because right after that, he said, honor thy mother and father. First he said, honor thy parents in the Lord. Then he said, honor thy mother and father. So what parents are you talking about? Those that becomes parents over us, spiritual parents over us. He said, honor them. Do them honor. Don't harm them. And you're touching even God's anointed. Just because you're anointed, you think God allow you to yet touch his anointed? No, that's not how that works. So watch this. So as I continue to see this thing, I say, okay, Lord, what's this affecting? What's happening here with this, with this, with this nonsense here? He said, well, the issue is, and God gave me, uh, uh, three, three, uh, well, actually four major issues here. And I notice I'm looking at what God gave me here because I wrote them down. So I wouldn't forget to tell you. <clears throat> the first thing he says, they have, they are, uh, they said they are, he said they are touching mine anointed. He said, I've already given my word concerning those who touch my anointed. Touch not my anointed. <clears throat> he said the next thing, they are abusing the parents in the Lord. I just talked about that. The third one. Now this is a very, very serious one here. The third one and the fourth one that I give you. He said they are destabilizing, destabilizing foundation and territories and gains that have been collected by those that went before them. So the foundation, the territory, and the gains that were captured before you came about and had a platform, the reason you have a platform is because of those foundations and territories and gains that were collected before you. And now you're going to tear down the very things that got you a platform. He can't do it that way. So the next thing the Lord said to me, he said, watch this. He said, they are causing frustration. And the word he uses, hold ups in the realms of the spirit. I said, okay, I get this one totally. And the Lord immediately took me to Daniel after Daniel had prayed, trying to get a response from the Lord. By the time the angel made it to Daniel, the angel said, I, I, when the day you, I heard you from the first day you prayed, I heard you. He said, I, and this, I was sent. He said, but when I come through the heavens, there was so much frustration. There was so much going on in that second heaven to where I could not pass. He said, so I got tied up in the second heavens. He said, and then God, sent Michael to help me. He said, and now I am here with, with what you prayed for 21 days ago. Are you hearing me? Because Daniel was waiting on this thing for days to take place, but he got tied up in the realms. Why? Because there were too many people who were slashing men and women of God for no reason. For at least for no reason that we can tell, but we find out later, this is a spirit of Baal. What's wrong with a Baal spirit? First thing, Jezebel, the one who attacks other men and women of God. Then we see that spirit of jealousy going on. The spirit of jealousy that, that keeps going on there. The spirit of the whisperer keeps going on there. They go around and they, they speak, speak, uh, 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 speak its secrets and all these things amongst each other to determine who they're going to come out and blast next. 
It's all a case of nonsense. If you're still on, please share this thing to all your friends and likes. And I'm going to keep going on this notion. But we, this got to go viral. We're going to get this all over the world. So share it if you can with all of your, your friends and likes. So watch this. So, so he says here, he says, so what happens here? There are people who have asked me for their healing, but their healing is tied up in the realms. He said, because they confided in that person that got attacked. They knew their healing was coming. To, God was going to use that person for the, his healing to come through that person. And with a touch, they would be healed. They knew that was the route. But then that person got attacked, so it got stuck in the realms. It's still sitting. Many requests, God was telling me, are already in the second realms, held up because angels are there fighting. Because as we are trying to get that breakthrough, people are yet... Uh, carving up the men and women of God to where the very thing that we prayed for has not made it to us yet. Many people uh, is tied up in the realms. So what God has to do, God has to then come and begin to destroy. I said, okay, Lord, what does, what does this thing look like? He said, first, go and warn them. He took me to Exodus chapter three, verse 18, 19. He said, when a person has gone wicked in his way, and I tell you that that person is going to die. He said, you must go warn that person. He said, because if that person dies and you do not warn them, the blood will be on your hand because I sent you to warn them. That's why I'm warning them today. He said, but if you warn them and yet they still die, the Lord said, what I will do then if they still die, the blood will not be on your hands. He said, but, but. You, if you warn them and if they correct their way, of course they can be forgiven by the Lord and raised up to, to, to a new season to go on to where they need to be. But the first thing they must do is turn from their wicked ways in the ways they are doing this man. So the Lord sent me to go warn them. What do we mean by turn from their ways? When we see this nonsense, we should use our platform to condemn it. Like, <laughs> I mean this. When we see this nonsense, you don't even have to use names. Like, I'm not using names today. Use your platform to condemn this nonsense. Uh, so watch this. Meaning what? They have friends of those. Look at all those people that were lined up. On, I'm telling you, something demonic got into that movie to where everything went to shambles after that movie. Now, most of those people that sit uh, according to that movie have been fighting within the last three or four months. One of them even came out and attacked others that helped them with the movie. Are you hearing me? Re removed himself from being friends with someone who's in the movie with them. What kind of nonsense is this? And let me say something about this movie while I'm there. There were only about two and maybe a half that really worked any power, any serious power. Everybody else was just noise, was just talk. No real word of God. They were just talk, talking, sentiments, being emotional in what they are saying, trying to sound powerful when really... As you go through, there were only about two in there that had worked any serious power. And one of them was my brother here from the Orlando area here in Florida. But the rest of them, ah, I'm telling you, that's a, I mean, there's one out there in, in Stockton, California that was part of the movie. Yes, he does have some power with him. But you can do better, Stockton, California. You can talk to some of your buddies and tell them this nonsense has got to stop because God has sent the warning. You can do better, Pasco Washington. I love you. I watch you all the time, Pasco Washington. I watch you all the time. You've been connected with some serious men of God. But lately here, I don't see what you're doing much to condemn your friends. Condemn them that this nonsense of attacking men and women of God, it has to stop. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying here today? I said, okay, Lord, I'm getting to the end of this thing now, Lord. What's, uh, you know, cause many people go and trying to cast out devils, but they don't deal with the root. Cause they don't have the level to deal with roots. So they pow. They cause somebody falls out on the floor. They assume that the devil has left them. No, the devil got quiet because he watched your pattern. You touch with all of this highlight touching. They fall to the ground and the devil just get quiet and you assume he's gone because you don't have the spiritual intellect to know that that devil is hiding from you. You didn't have the power to deal with the root of the matter. You were trying to deal with it from surface. So that person is tormented even worse than they were before they met you. 
That's what I think about that movie that went on. Some serious mess has happened concerning that movie. And we got to fix what the aftermath of that movie has caused a lot of shaking in the body of Christ. I condemn that movie right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Something happened there in that movie that was not right. So watch this. So I'm getting to the end of this now. I said, okay, Lord, how do I conclude this matter here? The Lord said to me, he said, tell them this. I wrote it again. I'm telling you, I'm reading what God told me to write. I'm going to say this last thing, and then I'm expecting you all to do your job, which is to do what? Forward this as many people as you can. I'm talking, share this with as many people as you can. Now, here we go. He said, number, he said, first thing first, judgment has already begun against them. That's the first thing he said to me. Judgment has already begun against them. He said, many are already sick and weak. He said, many of them are sick in their bodies. He said, and he said, he said, so, uh, and they're becoming more and more tired as they are seeing themselves. They're becoming worn out as they seeing themselves. He said, and it is not Satan that's against them. It is I, the Lord, who is against them. My hand has become against them until they stop this nonsense and repent. Here's the last thing. He said, they'll begin to see a, 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 an instant decrease in their meetings. P their meetings will get smaller and smaller and smaller. You will begin to see this happen more and more. And they'll try to stack up all these preachers to try to teach, to try to fill up a place. But he said it decreases more and more because my hand will be against them. And the next one he says, he said, it, he said, their ministries will soon dissolve as their followers will get smaller and smaller. He said, they won't even know that people have quit following them because they will look at their numbers and not look at attendees. He said, it will become smaller and smaller and they will have to reach for help to try to recover their ministry. And he said, he said, they best seek me while they can find me. And you know what that means? If they wait beyond God's statute of limitations concerning this, they may not even recover soon in this mess. They have to stop attacking these people this way. Stop attacking these fathers. It doesn't matter to you what they have done in their past or what it looks like. You're not the police to police up those whom God has raised to a certain level. You're not that police. So leave them be and do your ministry. And last thing God said, and this one scared me because he gave them a timeline. Two timelines God gave me. Now, if I be a prophet of God, mark these three timelines. These two timelines. He said, they have 72 hours to repent. Three days. They have three days to repent. Now to me, I've never seen God even do this before. So he's really trying to spare them some mercy or some grace. He said they got three, three days to repent for this nonsense. He said, and then after that, he said they have three months. If they don't repent in three months, they will see their ministry dissolve. Now watch that. I don't care how many followers you have right now. I don't care if you got millions. God is a hand of God and you will see this thing turn 90 days from three days. In three days, if you don't repent, 90 days, your ministry will dissolve. You will try to keep it, try to keep it, rename it, do something else to it and try to keep going like this. It's going to go. You will see it go. That's right. First, the spirit, then the natural. You will see it go. And if you want that sickness to leave you, you should stop that nonsense and repent. Don't use your platform to destroy men and, and women of God who's reached a certain level. All of us, we must condemn this nonsense. Now, I'm asking you, if you believe what I'm saying, share it, spread it, forward it, 
mention whatever you need to do. Your thousands of followers, this need to go across the world. I'm doing boost myself to get this to where it needs to be. I thank, let's pray. Father, I thank God for all those who have gone before me. Those who are, 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 are who you made strong prophets like the one in Simi Valley, California. The one in Maryland. The one that is the woman of God that is in LA that you put a man, you, you caused her to carry a mantle. The man of God that is that is in um, the late great Atibi Joshua who has gone before us, Lord. The, that, that prophet of, of Nigeria who are responsible for changing most of Nigeria, God. I thank you for him. I thank you for the Bishop of Dallas, God, uh, who, who you've caused to carry that mantle. Only until here lately we see men of God attacking him for some strange reason. When we should be holding him up, that proper transfer happens with that mantle as he gets uh, more and more in, in his age. Uh, that that mantle transfer will happen to others. We celebrate them in the name of Jesus. I celebrate my spiritual papa, the, the bond servant of Christ of Cape Town. I thank you, God. I thank you for him. He has gone before me, so he has made this thing easy for me. Thank you for the impartation of all of them, God. Even the man of God that's in Philly that they've been attacking because he's an old school preacher who, who concerned that, that the word of God can be literally followed, Father. But yet they attack this man of God. And yet he continues to bring the scripture, a strong God, right there in Philadelphia. We thank you that you graduated him to one of the biggest places there in Philadelphia. Keep blessing him, Lord, and let your spirit cover and shower him, God. All of them that have gone through this route, God. I thank you for those forefathers that has been there for us. Father, we are not there to judge them or condemn them in any way. Yet we lift them up that the mantles that they carried would one day fall upon us because we are the next generation to carry this gospel to the people. And so shall they be that the word of the Lord goes forth. And it will deliver, it will heal, it will set free, God. They will see the days again of Jeremiah, the days of Elijah, the days of John the Baptist. They will see these days again, God, where you wrought perfect and great miracles at the hand of your men and women of God. For this day, God, I even pray for those who have been spirit filled with that spirit of Cain. I bind that spirit of Cain right now in the name of Jesus. I bind that spirit of Baal right now. I bind that spirit of, of Baal in the name of Jesus. That spirit of Jezebel that's trying to creep in and attack the men and women of God. I break that spirit right now by the power of God in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I look forward to that 72 hours. Just knowing, just believing in my heart that they will repent. They will stop the nonsense and repent. Even publicly, they will repent. And they will see even more followers than they've ever seen before in their life. Once they stop this nonsense and repent, that your hand would be upon them again. I thank you, Father, for all those that have chimed in. I give you all honor. And all praise and all glory. Let this thing go virus. Viral. Viral. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I love you all with the love of the Lord. Ah, I want to say this before I go. Because I saw this spirit coming. Many of you out there that's, that this has, has bothered them out there. You're going to look me up. Who is this man of God? Look me up. Please look me up. Dig deep. And I hope you don't just try to use Google to look me up. Yeah, you can find me, but don't just try to use Google or Facebook to look me up. You look me up, go into the realms of the spirit. That's how I know these people. All these people that are there in these different uh, states and, and cities that I called out, I, I have not met them in person, other than my spiritual father, the rest of them I never met in person. You know why I went and met them? In the realms of the spirit. If they are not there, I don't follow them. If they are not there in the realms of the spirit, I don't listen to them. But if they are there, it's because God has elevated them to be there. So go look me up. Dig up. Because what you want to do is try to destroy me. Because the Lord has used me to expose what you're doing. 
Well, I hope you heard the word of the Lord and not heard me. I love you. I love you all. To God be the glory.